okay guys welcome back to my youtube channel thank you for always stopping by liking commenting and subscribing for the new ones don't forget to like comment subscribe turn on notification bell so that you'll be notified when i drop the next episode on i do kubu hi feel free to tell us what you want on the comment section asad asks can she promise that she wouldn't ever think of rashid or meet him ever she's speechless at this and sits on the sofa she promises anyways that she won't meet and would do what she couldn't do in 17 years that she would throw him out from his thoughts and heart but asks for the same promise from asad for her sake asad calms down dilchard and putting his hand on her head promises that he wouldn't meet asad if she wants this and leaves dilchard breaks down into tears ayan too is in a fix to make the same promise to Shirin, but he is forced by Shirin to place a hand on her head to never meet Assad and leaves. A stranger tells Zoya that none from the past lives here even if she has come to the right place. Zoya thinks that now only Assad would, with his skills can help her in finding her father. Both Ayan and Assad are disturbed. Ayan places a call to Assad. He picks it up. Asad and Ayan remembers their promises and without talking, cancels the phone, breaking down into tears. Nikat is also in tears seeing Ayan and says that his pain can't be made invisible by turning his head away. She says she is hot at her engagement being called off, but that pain is nothing compared to the one Ayan is feeling at the loss of his deep relation with Asad. She says she can't have happiness at his cost. Ayan stops her from from saying anything further he says that asad loves her more than life and has blessed her with all the happiness in life as his responsibility of being a brother which they would perform at any cost he says that the love asad showered on them would surface them not just through this but many more lives asad asks about tilchard from najma she says that she's resting and asks if asad is okay he sends her off for study Asad confronts Zoya, who has just walked into the front door and remembers that Zoya had known his secret about Ayan and presumes that Zoya must have told her. Zoya, oblivious of anything, says that she has a special tax for him. He says that he has one for her too. Asa tells Zoya that she would pack her bags and her belongings as she would have to leave this house the next day. Zoya is surprised to hear this and asks the reason. He says that he has made his decision and he doesn't feel the need to explain its reason to her and leaves saying that she should be gone by the time he returns from his meeting in the morning. Zoya is in tears. Asad and Ayan are gazing into vacant space with a sad look on their faces. Asad remembers how Rashid had brought Ayan to meet Asad for the first time and he had given him his finger to be able to walk and their relationship and friendship growing stronger with age and how ultimately Ayan had been snatched from his company by Rashid while Dilchard held him back and is all emotional and in tears over this. Zoya hurt at Asad's fickle behavior is grumbling to herself. The next day Asad is getting ready and finds Zoya, Zoya's earring in his closet and remembers how it was stuck in his coat. Zoya finding out about rented rooms but without much success, she thinks to herself of other options for her to live elsewhere. Asad walks in knocking on the door. Zoya asks him not to worry as she's almost done packing. She sees her visa-related email and says that she would have to leave as he told her to. She tells him that visa company gave her only a month more to stay in India and so suddenly presumes that he, being a spy, must have been behind this even after she had told him that she would leave his house but he used his connection to speed up her leaving from india zoya says she doesn't understand what his problem with her is he says that once she leaves india he hopes everything will be better in the country again zoya says that he has he can leave for his room if he is done with his taunting He says he just came to ensure that she's gone by the time he returns from his office and leaves. Zoya signs thinking to herself that it would be very difficult for her to find her father in less than a month. 
Assad is thinking that Dilchard might have stopped him from talking, but is worried what did Ayan call him for, and if he is in some kind of trouble for meeting Assad. An employee gets Nikat into Assad's room. She wishes him. He asks her the reason for her coming after her engagement yesterday. She says that it didn't happen. She says that her sinner broke off because and Assad because of Assad. And Assad completes her statement saying that he knew about her and apologizes for the same. She says not to apologize and tells of the situation at home and an Ayan's dilemma. Assad is tends to hear this why Nikat blames herself for it for the rift between the brothers. Assad asks her not to blame herself as it had been done 17 years back. But she says that the only window through which they met has now stopped due to her. While Asa tries to stop her, Nikat pleads to let her continue and goes on to say that because of her, the pure relation between stepbrothers is hampering and she wouldn't mind remaining single due to that. He calms her down asking if she likes Imran. She says that her sinner keeps demanding things from her family but Imran doesn't do that and actually makes her feel good despite her complexion. She says that now this marriage can't happen. Assad says that it's true that not meeting Ayan is going to be difficult, but he won't be able to live with the guilt of being responsible for breaking off his sister's marriage. He asks her to go home and call if she needs anything, also asking her never to take the risk of ever coming again. She apologizes for what Mamujan did to them and tells him everything about Mamujan talking to Dilchard. Assad is surprised. She leaves bidding him goodbye. He remembers telling Zoya to leave for no fault of hers and regrets his decision. When Shirin asks about talking to Hasina from Razia, Razia tells her that she had called but Hasina was unavailable, but they have left a message and they expect her to contact them. Shirin breaks down and asks Rashid to take her to Hasina's place so that she could beg if she had to, keeping him around from marrying somewhere else. While Shirin goes basic, Nikat tries to calm her, saying what she thinks of doing is futile. She also adds, saying that she can't see her parents' head bowed down like that in front of anyone. Rashid and Shirin pacify Nikat and ask her not to worry, as they would handle it. Asad comes into Zoya's room and finds it empty. Just then, Zoya walks out of the bathroom. She tells him that he doesn't have to worry since she's leaving and just waiting for Najma and Tilcha to return so that she can wish them goodbye. She tells that she lied to them saying that her visa expired and therefore she has to go or else they would be hurt if they know the truth. She begins to leave but Asad stops her. She says that even he should maintain this to Tilcha and Najma. He asks her where she's going to stay for one month till her visa is valid. She says that she would manage in a hotel for some days while she finds a place to stay for a month. Assad hesitantly tells her that for the month, she could stay with them only and he can deal with that. While Zoya is boggled out of her wits, Assad asks her to unpack her things while he cancels her cab. Even after he leaves, Zoya is still dumbfounded. When Assad returns, Zoya asks him the reason for his kind of behavior. She tries to hint about his brain being tampered with while he's training. He doesn't seem to understand and she thinks he's again being secretive. She again says that his training has made him assume that he's superior above every other civilian. While he goes to cancel the cab, Zoya calls out to him and says that the next time he decides to pull some stunts on her, he should remind himself that she knows his secret. He says that now Dilchard knows too. She expresses her surprise over the fact that Dilchard knows he's a spy. Assad is surprised to hear about Zoya's secret. He is then reminded of Zoya's indigestible good-natured behavior due to thinking of him as a spy. When Assad confirms that she would ha behave well with him on that presumption, he doesn't bother to clarify. Both leave thinking that they have won over the other. While Assad asks Hasina to reconsider her decision, Hasina says that it's not possible for her to get past the family's tainted reputation. Assad says that he doesn't have the habit of beating around the bush and placing a revolver in front of her, 
clarifies that he is not threatening her, rather he is asking her to return this to Ferus, who has an unlicensed revolver, and if he doesn't stop pursuing them, then he would have to file a case against Ferris for unlawful possession and also of unconstitutional arrest and detention of Ayan. She changes her tone talking about her demand of a bungalow in Rashid's new project for Imran and Nikat. He shuts her up, offering her to give instant possession of a much more upgraded bungalow. Hasina's lust is visible on her face, while Assad cashes in on her greed, saying that he would give it to her on two conditions. First, being she would do the engagement today herself, and second, being she would ensure that Nikat lives peacefully and happily with Imran forever, without any troubles. She immediately agrees and butters up in her tone, saying that she can identify people of substance when she sees them. As her two taunts, saying that he too can do the same and knows about their statue by their faces. Hasina doesn't take offense and lives in a hurry and leaves after, after Assad courtly threatens her that if she ever tries anything wrong with Nikat, then she will know how to take things much better than he knows how to give. Okay guys, thank you for watching today's episode on I Do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. Bye.